I think Magnus uh, had some crushing results yeah. against him then. So if he can find back to that form, um, it could be a good finish to the day for, for Magnus. All right. Ding, ding, ding. It's what we hear, David. The game has started. And what are we seeing? We're seeing the Sicilian defense, one of the most popular openings in chess, but also from black, one of the most counter-attacking openings in chess. And Magnus hasn't handled it in the traditional way. He's putting his own personal stamp on this opening. White's queen coming out very early. We normally recommend not to do this. So definitely don't try this at home, especially if you're first starting out the game. White's queen now, attacked by the black knight, is gonna have to retreat. Queens are the most valuable pieces, so you need to save them for later. Anytime the queen is attacked, she has to retreat because she's always gonna get hit by lower valued pieces. In the open Sicilian, it's one of the most fighting ways to handle the position. And I think Magnus is gonna do that over the next two or three turns. This opening with white is really, really dynamic. Uh, already there's an imbalanced pawn structure, especially if, if, as mentioned, both king's castle on opposite flanks of that in chess. That's one of the most uh, kind of double-edged things. We'll see black start to develop pieces now as well starting with this dark squared bishop on a great diagonal. Pride and joy. And uh, okay, Magnus not committing his king yet, but this type of idea is typical. Uh, we see a trade here. You'd never ever want to capture white's bishop because this would allow the white queen in the vicinity of your king. And uh, now there would be checkmating ideas all over the place. This black king lacking defenders, only one real defender this night, and that's not gonna be enough on the dark squares. So often you delay it and delay it and delay it as long as possible because then your opponent can't commit to the attack yet. If white went on the attack on one side, then the black king maybe would run to the other side of the board. Um, so that's why they're playing with pieces. Uh, very good question, Ivanka. I guess once you've said A, you normally say B, and okay, he does commit his king. If black's bishop did run away from a potential trade, then you've moved your bishop twice in the opening. You don't normally want to move the same piece twice. Um, so you're right, white definitely uh, will be tempted now to use the knight and capture black's light squared bishop. Uh, but knights and bishops worth roughly the same. It's not clear that that necessarily benefits white yet. Uh, that black can organize against white's king. And there we go. And uh, black yet to organize an attack, but white is ready. If that pawn pushes one square further forward, white's rook in the corner is ready or ready to join the attack and actually maybe even decide the game. Yeah, in all types of positions, all types of random positions, that pawn is whizzing up the board and causing trouble now. And yeah. uh, okay, meanwhile, Duda centralizes his knight. Anywhere, anytime, <laughs> any against anything. And uh, okay, we do have some moves because that uh, H-pawn, Harry, has found itself on the fifth row. I mean, that is so... Whoa, look that at is that H-pawn. Yeah, and it's now gone. And yeah. now you can see, as David highlighted, that rook in the corner, that now has a nice open line. And uh, all white needs to do now is start attacking along the dark squares. But now this rook is on a completely... He has done this. It's on a completely open line towards the black king. Now all you need to do is really eliminate this defender and then there's going to be checkmating ideas all over the place. Mm. We could see a checkmate in under 20 moves unless... OK, he's actually gone for this, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, yeah, unless Duda's really coming up with some genius defence. I think we're going to see Magnus just crush this game. And we meet in half an hour and then we decide. Or take the meeting outside in the park. Even better. Even better. Ah, wow. Whoa. And where did Magnus go? And what happens to the bar? Yeah, um, Duda just retreating his bishop. Actually, the bishop came from this square a few moves ago, so that doesn't help Black's position at all. Um, White does have a winning advantage now, but Magnus, is he disconnected? Yeah, that's, yeah. If he is, is he going to get back into the idea behind that move is to actually free up this square for the black knight, the knight trying to jump in to attack the white queen, attack the white dark squared bishop. But this is very logical. As we mentioned several times already, the bishop does jump in. Magnus has played this. This is the key defender, black's dark squared bishop. And once you remove that, there's going to be checkmating ideas all over the place. And he can also just castle his king. But I would keep things simple. And he does do that, taking this bishop and... Uh, yeah, I'm expecting to see some clever moves by Magnus, but he will surely finish this one off. Yeah, and uh, a lot of enjoyment for everyone because we do enjoy, a tr well, a very convincing attack. So now we're waiting to see where the rook takes knight and it's on the board. It's happened. It made sense, you know, just blast open the king because op uh, um, opening lines is like the currency for attack. The more lines that you open against the king, the more vulnerable and exposed he is. So now we're expecting okay, knight takes knight, just yep. as you said. That's, uh, at mm. first I was about to suggest the white queen jumping in with a check first, but that would have allowed black's knight mm -hmm. to come back and block. So now this move, I mean, this series of moves that uh, I mentioned, it's actually happening on the board. 
The other reason Magnus can go for this is because Black's king can never escape. The king has to move now, and at the very, very minimum, there's a safety net for Magnus. He could just give checks forever with his queen, and Black's king cannot escape, so that would end in a repetition and a draw. Mm. Uh, a nice thing just to have in your pocket. And now Black's king steps back in this way, and there we go. The bishop moves. The white king is about to evacuate the first rank, or maybe even just castle. And then that white rook in the left-hand corner is not doing anything. But it is going to be the piece that delivers the killer blow. We're jealous. I never, oh, never heard of it. You, they, but they sell them here in Norway. Really? Yeah. Oh, we have a result. Yep, young Christoph Duda has resigned. Magnus Carlsen is actually shaking his head, but is, uh, it is a win for the world champion, an important win for him, actually.